So we have individually talked about all of the separate techniques that goes with factoring polynomials. In this video, we're going to be putting them all together. So let's review them very quickly or what checklist you should be going along the way when you're trying to factor any polynomial. So the first thing that you should always look for is, of course, you want to pull out your common factor first. And remember, that's the only technique that you end up without two sets of parentheses. So if you do it first, then you won't have to worry about it in the rest of the problem. After that, you should look at the number of terms, because that's going to tell you what technique to do from there. If you have four terms, that means we're going to factor by grouping. You group the first two terms, and you group the last two terms. You make sure your parentheses match, and then you factor it out as a common factor. Mm -hmm. If it has three terms, it is a trinomial. The prefix tri means three. We factor it by doing the opposite of foiling. We set up our two sets of parentheses and try and come up with our two binomial. If it has two terms, we actually have to make a choice here. But it should be a pretty easy choice. The choice is it's got to be either a difference of squares or it's got to be a sum or difference of cubes. So we just have to decide whether it's squares or cubes. And if it's squares, we need to make sure that it's a difference or if it's a subtraction. If it's only one term, then you actually cannot factor it. There's no way to factor any monomial or any one-term polynomial. So after we've decided what process to use from there, then don't forget any other techniques that we may need to use. Um, if there's any negatives with our leading terms, I suggest that you factor it out. It makes the rest of the process easier. And if you end up with two identical factors, then you should condense them to something quantity squared. Now, if you haven't caught on to the process, just because you've factored it one way doesn't mean that you cannot continue to factor it. So if you've done one factoring technique, you basically need to start this checklist over with each set of parentheses that you have to make sure you cannot factor any one of those farther. And if you can, make sure you keep factoring it until you've used all items on this checklist. So let's go ahead and see some examples. I have three of them. This is example one. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can finish this one, factoring it all the way through from start to finish. So my first thought is, do I have any common factors throughout? And I do not. Then I count my number of terms. I have four terms. So that tells me I'm going to factor this one by grouping. I group my first two terms and I group my last two terms. In my first two terms, I have a common factor of x squared. So if I take that out, I'm left with x minus 2. In my last two terms, I don't actually have any common factors. But remember, if your middle sign is negative, then you absolutely have to factor out a negative. And when you do that, that changes the signs of your last two terms. So it makes me a positive x minus 2. Or if you wanted to, you could think about factoring out a negative 1. It might seem pointless to put it there from the last step, but it actually is going to be easier for the next step to put that 1 there. Look at my parentheses. Make sure that they do match exactly, and they do. So I factor those out, and I'm left with an x squared minus 1. So I have finished factoring it by grouping, but I'm not done yet. If I look in my second set of parentheses, I notice both of those terms are actually squares. x squared is, of course, a square, and 1 is actually a square itself. So I can factor this one farther by using my difference of squares method. I cannot factor my first set of parentheses farther because it has two terms, and neither one of those are squares nor cubes. So I just copy down my first set of parentheses, and I set up my two sets of parentheses to do difference of squares. x times x gives me x squared 
1 times 1 gives me 1. And these factor into conjugates, meaning 1 is positive and 1 is negative. Double check to make sure I cannot factor any farther, and I cannot. So this here is my final answer to example one. Let's move on to example two. I suggest that you pause the video to see if you can factor this guy on your own. So first thought is common factor, and I do have a common factor of five, so I'll factor that out. That leaves me with x squared plus 2x plus 1. Then if I look in my parentheses, I have three terms or a trinomial. So I set up my parentheses here. x times x gives me x squared. 1 times 1 gives me 1. My outside gives me a 1x. My inside gives me a 1x. And I want to come up with a positive 2x. So I can do that by making them both positive. Now, I cannot factor anything individually farther because if I look inside my parentheses, there are two terms, and I cannot factor those by using squares or cubes. And my first guy here is only one term, so I cannot factor it that way. But if I look at these two sets of parentheses, they match exactly. So I can condense those as x plus 1 quantity squared. Don't forget to copy your common factor down from step to step. That's a mistake that I see quite often. So just write it first, and then that way you will never lose it. And so we have factored example 2 completely. Let's move on to example three, which is my final example of factoring completely. Again, I suggest you pause the video and do this on your own. So the first thing that I notice here is that this is not in typical order. This is really not in descending order, where I have my highest exponent first and my constant term last. So what I want to do here is I want to rearrange this. I want to put my negative x to the fourth up front and my positive 16 in the end. Now that gives me a negative in my first term, which I don't really like. So instead, I'm going to factor out that negative. That leaves me with positive x to the fourth minus 16. When I take out a negative, it switches my sign. Now, if I look inside my parentheses, I have two terms. So I have to decide whether it's squares or cubes. And these are squares. And then I double check to make sure that this is a subtraction, a difference of squares. And it is. So I can go ahead and factor this by using a difference of squares. So x squared times x squared will give me x to the fourth. 4 times 4 will give me 16, and these factor into conjugates, meaning 1 positive and 1 negative. Look to see if I can factor again, and I can, but I can only factor one of these again. These are, again, squares, so I can only factor this one because it is the only difference of squares. So the other two pieces I just copy down. My negative, my x squared plus 4, and then this factors into x plus 2 and x minus 2. And I have factored example 3 completely. So at this point, you should be ready to tackle any factoring problem. And that means you have set up a good foundation for the rest of your college algebra or any of the rest of your math career. I want to go back to emphasize that factoring is the most important process of any math career because there are lots of things that come back to factoring, and you will see this very soon. The next set of videos or the next homework assignment will have a lot of factoring process in it, and throughout the rest of the semester, you'll be surprised how many times you'll hear me say in this class that you'll need to use your best friend, which is not actually your calculator, but it is actually factoring. So factoring should be your best friend.
If you don't understand it, don't hesitate to ask some questions.